Portugal and we are going to be uh, going through the home buying process. My name is Claudia de Silva. I'm an agent with Coldwell Banker and I have a wonderful guest today, the expert um, in Lisbon and surrounding areas, Lucia Fregoso with Coldwell Banker. Lucia, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi, <laughs> so I'm here from Lisbon and uh, yes, ready to start. Good. So you are here today uh, because you registered for this webinar. I need to tell you, uh, please, if you have to leave, don't worry. If you are late and you missed some information, don't worry. We are going to be sending everyone a replay. You are going to receive either you attend or not a replay in your inbox. So please don't uh, get concerned if you miss a little bit of this information or if you had some questions and you didn't get to ask them we're still going to have time for that when we send the replay we are here for you this is just the first step on what i hope to be a long and and, and productive relationship of helping you uh, understanding and perhaps buying a home in portugal so welcome portugal home buying process from a to z uh, Lucy is in Lisbon, I am in Houston, Texas, and we are both agents with Coldwell Banker. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about myself and then I'm going to ask Lucia to tell a little bit more about our experience and what, you know, a little bit of background. So um, the first thing that you need to do, either you're buying a home anywhere in the world really, is to connect with an experienced agent. You probably got here today either because you saw this information through Lucia Fergoz or myself. You're probably aware or you have attended some of my previous webinars and you are probably aware that I sell properties internationally. As a matter of fact, we have quite a lot of properties in common, Lucia and myself. We're going to be listing this week here in the North American market. Our intention is to bring properties that qualify uh, for a lot of the golden visa requirements actually uh, and otherwise, but to bring it to the North American market and share with you guys really good opportunities of you purchasing a property. And I also help a lot of clients that have homes in Portugal and want to sell them. We just finished uh, a trans we just ended a transaction where we helped someone that lives in Texas, has a home in Porto, and we sold it together with my team in Portugal. So if you have any questions about the overall process, how can you list a home here in the US? How can you sell a home in Portugal from the US? I am all ears and happy to assist you. I am a certified international property specialist. I've been doing this for over six years. I am Portuguese. I speak the language. I know the culture. I also speak English and Spanish. And uh, from here, Houston, we are a hub. So we get to connect with a lot of cultures around the world. And Lucia, do you want to tell everybody a little bit of um, your experience in real estate otherwise? Yes, so I uh, live in Lisbon. I work in Lisbon mainly, uh, also around Lisbon and uh, districts around Lisbon. Um, I love this city and I love this country and I love even more these people. So it's a pleasure to work. I've been working with Portuguese clients, but also uh, very much with uh, international clients and both in the uh, United States and Canada. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, used to work online uh, because some of them are not able to travel yet uh, and we are doing that just that. Fantastic. Thank you, Lucia. So the first things we wanted to share with you guys, um, the first things that are important to be aware is that connecting with your uh, local agent and your CIPS expert agent, it's very important because they are knowledgeable. The CIPS, such as myself and, and Lucia very soon, we have the knowledge about different markets. We got uh, to undertake uh, a lot of education and make sure that we were exposed to understand the different nuances of buying and, and selling in different countries. And Lucia is your local agent in the place you're going to buy. So whenever you have questions about that particular location, you need to have a reliable source that knows the area, understands the process, knows about pricing, 
can advise you and has a network as well, of course, knowing the language and the culture, not just the language and the Portuguese culture, but your culture as well. Lucia was just telling me that she visited many times before. She deals with a lot of Americans already, North Americans. So she's familiar with the language and with the culture as well. We do have the experience. It's not the first time that we're going to help someone buying or selling abroad. Um, and Lucia, that's pretty much where her focus have been. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to share with you guys, um, that is a question I get all the time, is uh, Portuguese agents, and actually in a lot of other countries, not just in Portugal, they don't really need to be licensed. So when you are dealing with someone that is local, you should really go with an agent that works for a renowned brokerage so you know that they're getting the right tools and resources they're getting their own certifications inside the brokerage because we don't have a national requirement in portugal and the last thing i wanted to share with you guys is the same as probably you are used to here in the u.s when you go purchase a home or you sell a home you always sign a sales uh, representation or a buyer representation in portugal should be no different and something that lucy brought to my attention and that i really need to share with you guys and she's going to emphasize that is you know you really need to have that one person not only that knows the area and everything involving in the real estate uh, they need to know how to navigate the process um, and by understanding your needs they're going to reach you're going to reach that goal faster you're going to be able to purchase the property you're looking for and sometimes you're going to be purchasing a property you didn't even think about it in a different area and through a conversation with lucia maybe um you're going to end up somewhere else you thought originally that's why you're going to go with an expert and lucy what was the other thing that people should know uh, when they work with the one agent what is important that they do so in terms of uh, not contacting uh, directly uh, yes, uh, it's important. Uh, I work with some clients that I find the properties for them. Sometimes they also find something they like. Uh, and in that case, they should always send that link to me so that I can contact the agent with the listing. If you contact the agent directly, then I lose the opportunity to work with you because they will register you as a client and they will say, okay, I have the contact, he's my client, he's not, you don't need to, to be present in this business, and then I, I can't work with, with the client. So uh, it's no problem, usually uh, clients understand that very well, and they uh, forward the links directly to me, we work like that, we have a system, and uh, it's, it's uh, very easy, it's just to explain that this is uh, important to have in mind, uh, so that we can, uh, you know, uh, check all these properties uh, with the correct uh, agents and, and, and see also the history on, uh, on our MLS that we have uh, in, in Coldwell Banker. Absolutely. And another thing that I need to add to that, the, the most important reason why we are asking you to do that is you're establishing a relationship. So it's like, you know, exclusive dating, right? It's one client, one agent. You are not going with multiple agents and, and you're not having that agent going with you and the seller and everybody else because you got to make sure it's like when you go to court when you go to court you're going to bring your own lawyer it's the exact same thing you should always be represented it's the same in the united states and it should be the same in portugal this is one of the reasons why we're here today i wanted to introduce you to a local expert so whenever you need to start a process you already have that contact um that reference and if you want someone that's going to cover a different area than lucia does we can also assist we have different contacts in different areas of the country, including the islands. Today, we're going to focus only on the mainland, but we certainly can help you if you're moving to the islands as well. So we are here today because either your CIPS and your local agent can help you make your real estate journey to Portugal easier and efficiently. We uh, have the understanding uh, of the areas. 
particular Lucia that focus mainly on Lisboa, uh, Cascais, Estoril, that's all the Lisbon area, Santarém, Setúbal and Leiria, that is pretty much Portugal center. Um, that is the area she is working in the most. However, we do have information about any other areas in Portugal. And of course, the most important thing that we need to do is start with the consultation uh, where we are going to define what your goals are. Today, you are doing a follow-up perhaps from a previous webinar. We started by why move to Portugal, Lucy and I have done that one. We have had about 3,000 views right now. Then we had a webinar about Golden Visa explaining what that was. If you would like a replay, please reach out. And today we are, you know, how do you buy a home? How do you really get started? But before you even dive into it, you need to define where, what's there, what kind of lifestyle, what kind of approach. Don't you agree, Lucia? Yes, yes. And that is very important because it's not only the technical side of uh, the property, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, we've talked about that, but also very much how do you feel, where do you want to feel, uh, what kind of city or, or maybe a village or what would you like to see when you open your window. These are uh, important information that sometimes clients share with us and i've been learning and also uh have this conversation with the clients to understand exactly what they are looking for what will make them happy because the house we can find in one street or the other but the neighborhood the the people that we see on the streets the you know the the shops everything makes the experience even more pleasant so I think that is also very important to combine the emotional side of buying a home with the technical part that understanding the markets, the properties and uh, helping clients to, uh, to then present a search that is meaningful to them and that we can find. And I think that is a very rewarding experience that we can find a home that they are very, very happy with, with, the, with what they, they found and then with what they are going to buy. Absolutely. And when you establish that partnership, starting with the consultation, you more, now more than ever, but you always have been doing this, but now more than ever, you are actually uh, sending properties to the clients that meet their criteria. Uh, they can, you know, kind of do uh, a little bit of a selection and you are actually previewing that homes. You are doing uh, virtual showings a lot lately. Yes, yes. It, it's it's very common nowadays. It works very well, and it's uh, it's a work that is uh, becoming normal. I have to say, uh, but it's it it works. Uh, at the moment, we are not able to. Some American clients, North American clients, are not able to travel to Portugal yet. So we've been doing that. Uh, you know, seeing the the online uh, the houses through online visits. And the, it's, we, always move, uh, we are always moving forward because uh, we can understand better what they are looking for and uh, we can have a selection uh, of uh, properties that make sense for them. So it's, it's uh, a new way of work, but it works, it works well. And uh, uh, as we can see then uh, later on, uh, we can do it both virtually, everything or, or combined and uh, it works well. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And, and uh, to emphasize what we're doing here today, getting you the information, connecting you with the experts and really providing you a, a streamlined highlights of the whole process, but also really explaining how important it is to have a partnership with your agent here in the US, but more so in Portugal, uh, an agent that has the expertise in certain areas that can set up an appointments for you. We're going to address that in a moment. But Things are different in Portugal. It's just the way it is. Scheduling a property is not one, two, three, like it can be in North America. Uh, the way that we get information about a property in Portugal is not one, two, three, like in North America. Their systems are not centralized. Uh, Lucia is a, it has an amazing, uh, amazing advantage. She works with Coldwell Banker that has one of the best local MLSs for their agents because there's not really a, uh, what we call a national multiple listing services. That would be where you can find all of the homes. They don't have a Zillow or a Trulia. Uh, so, you know, you need to know with who you are partnering yourself with so they can do the most of work for you, starting with you being mild away. 
So I think Lucia can back me up on this. These are the majority of the clients we work with. I also mentioned we work with sellers. So I do have clients that reside in the US and they want to sell their properties in Portugal. But the majority of the clients that we do have that are going into Portugal that purchase homes in Portugal are people that are either retiring in the future or retired right now. And you know what? I can't blame them because if I was going to retire, I probably would go to Portugal too. So uh, second homes, um, this is actually a, a, something that Lucia works with a lot, myself particularly. What we do is we market a lot of the Portuguese properties to North America market as a second home uh, and, and for different reasons. They can um, be uh, Portuguese, have Portuguese heritage and they want to buy a second home so they can rekindle with their Portuguese heritage, uh, bring their kids to Portugal uh, or they are North Americans and they want to start experiencing more of Portugal. Sometimes they want to invest in a second home that they can use half of the time and then have it as an income rental uh, property. Um, and some of them want to really apply for that golden visa. So after so many years of owning their property, they can apply for you know that permanent residency. So it's different things there that we are accustomed to see. Right, Lucia, what else do you get a lot? Yes, yes, it's true. I have a, a little bit of everything that you have here. Uh, mainly now, uh, surprisingly, I've been receiving uh, clients from North America that are moving here and they, some of them uh, don't even know the country. So they have never been here before, which is uh, <laughs> an adventure. Uh, but it's it's happening and I also have some other clients who will be um, moving here in the future but they are at the moment buying and they will rent for some years and when when they are ready to move they will probably stay on, on that house or they will sell it and they'll buy another one but they are uh, taking this time now to invest here have uh, an income from a rental as you said and then maybe in a few years they will move to Portugal to to live here Absolutely. And the reality of things is that real estate is getting more and more expensive everywhere, globally. And to purchase property in an European country that um, has amazing uh, school system, amazing medical uh, quality service uh, to, to residents and non-residents as well. That's very important for you to know. Um, as well as safety, uh, the climate, the food, all of the things that it offers and still get real estate for the amount that the Portuguese market offers is like almost unheard of. So if you were to compare with other European European countries, you're really definitely getting a lot for your money. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, Portugal is a cute little country uh, with so much history, uh, so rich in culture. Uh, all of the 18 districts districts are very different from one another. Although they are neighbors, they are very different. I, I dare to say that even the language sometimes is very different. So be prepared for that. Uh, now the Portuguese accents, the culture, uh, the, the food that they eat uh, from the coast to the interior is very different. And that also reflects uh, on the pricing. It's a country that is small by nature, but very accessible. It's uh, neighboring with Spain. Uh, you can get in and out easily from major airports. We have Porto Faro and Lisbon, they are the, ma the major airports, but we have more. You can go in and out with a train, Let's forget about COVID for a second. Uh, you can drive in and out of the country and you can also take a boat. Hey, maybe you just want to cross the uh, Atlantic Ocean and uh, go from the US all the way to Portugal. It's possible, it has been done. Um, so what did we decided to do here? We wanted to give you an idea based on uh, the coast, um, Normally, this is where the majority of the people are, are purchasing properties. And I think Lucy can confirm that for many reasons, they tend to be more desirable before its proximity to the water, but also employment as uh, Lucia probably can explain. And so the majority of the people buying on the coast are definitely buying apartments. It's more of a, an apartment market 
all sorts of, of, of apartments of all sizes. Uh, so we decided to just run some numbers for you. Lucia so kindly has done this uh, for us, run some numbers for us. We decided to not do uh, primary residence, residential homes, because um, the, the prices and everything else could be very different. But Lucia, explain a little bit about this pricing here uh, that we are showing on condos. Uh, so this is, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, an analysis that we've done. It's between uh, February and May from this MLS that we use. We, we, and also to have uh, an analysis that it's based on something that is similar. So we didn't want to mix here residential homes and apartments. So it's just apartments so to give you an idea of the prices. And uh, so we consider three or more uh, bedroom apartments, turnkey, and, and then we have the prices for the coast where uh, Claudia explained that uh, it's a combination of factors because of it's close to the sea and then we have also more employment. We also have tourism. So uh, traditionally we have more people on the coastline and we have uh, prices are also more expensive. Uh, here we have this, um, we are only focused here on mainland, so we are not including here uh, the islands. Um, but you can see on coastline, Lisbon, for instance, the capital city of Portugal, for a three-bedroom, it's almost 500,000 euros. Uh, and then we have other, all um, cities, um, Porto is the second city in Portugal, Faro in the Algarve, very well known for, for the seaside and Sutubo, which very close by to, to Lisbon. And then the other ones are cities who also have uh, uh, people, not as much as the coastline, but you can see that the prices, the higher that we have here on the interior is uh, 147,000, so much less, um, and even Guarda, much less compared uh, to Lisbon or Sutubo. So there is a a very uh, big difference in prices when you compare interior and coast. But of course, not everyone wants to stay uh, on the coastline. Uh, so from here, you can see, you know, the differences between the in, within the country. Uh, that's why we are also here to help you decide what makes sense for you. If it's the coastline, if you need, if maybe you don't need. And uh, as Claudia also mentioned before in other um, shows that we've uh, done together. Portugal is uh, very rich in uh, diversity, but in terms of distance, we can go uh, very fast from one the, from Lisbon to the north or from Lisbon to Algarve. So maybe for some clients, uh, you really don't need to stay in the major cities. You can stay one hour away and uh, you are already in the, the middle of the country, as to say. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we wanted to illustrate to you guys. So that initial consultation with your real estate expert is really important because we're going to be able to help you define what are you looking for? Are you going to be moving to Portugal permanently? Are you looking for a rental income property? Are you going to be using it half of the year or maybe not? If you use it half of the year, it's going to have a few things very different than if you never use it. So we really need to know what are you looking to do? If you decide to go the property by the coast this is what you need to know these are pictures of Faro, Lisboa, Porto uh, we also have here some outside of, of Lisboa itself but still within the same uh, district so this is what uh, a coastline uh, city is but in the countryside it's a, a whole other world i love Alentejo. i love the south the interior north and south of, of portugal you have more you get more for your money right you can easily get to the yeah. coast and go swimming you do not need to be with all of the tourists you if you are looking to retire in portugal maybe this is something you need to consider you get more for your money you can buy two three properties you can have income property and a primary residence that's why we're here to help you and look how beautiful that landscape is Mm -hmm. just gorgeous <laughs> and this one too i must say uh so expectations before we get started talking about the technical part of it um 
we need to set some expectations because we want you to be successful in purchasing a home in Portugal to have the least amount of headaches and to have the, the, the most amount possible of smiles. We want you to have an easy, a, a smooth transaction to be very happy and send us all your friends and family. That's what we want to do here. And so in order to proceed, uh, we need to address the things that are just different. That's all there is. And I actually think that those uh, differences are the reasons that you're perhaps wanting to buy a house in Portugal, right? So let's see what they are. Lucia, do you want to talk a little bit about managing expectations? Yes. So I think the first uh, approach to Portugal is to understand that we live in a different concept of time. So people like to sit down and have their coffee And at the same time, if they are at the bank or somewhere else waiting in line, maybe they are patiently waiting. And that is uh, what, uh, how we live. It's like <laughs> we, we enjoy life and uh, having a coffee, but we also sometimes are a little slower when taking care of papers or some other things. It's just the way we are. Uh, but I think it's in a way it's very healthy. It's very relaxed. Uh, so nothing. Uh, we try not to be very stressful. Um, it's, and I think it's very helpful when you understand that concept of time of Portugal and, and you see it in a, in a way that you can start understanding uh, the way we, we deal with things and the way we behave um, and then some other things that you probably will, <laughs> will discover when you are here but I think that is already a big help to understand that different concept of time and how people are um, have this calm and <laughs> way of living. Absolutely. So you guys, things are just different. They are a little bit slower paced. And I think coming from North America, I experience it for myself. Uh, sometimes it, it takes me a few days to, to really get in the Portuguese groove when I go visit because everything is like, oh, later, no, calm down, relax. And that's something that Portuguese tend to say all the time. Uh, just relax, just relax. And, and, you know, it just really gives you that idea. Uh, but that also reflects in the professional world and that's why we're here for so in a professional manner things are just done differently they are in a slower pace and this idea of having this webinar here today to be very fair came from uh, some of uh, the attendees from previous webinars expressed some uh, frustration is the word um, towards the process of purchasing a home that there was not really a guideline on how to buy a home that's why we created it Lucy and I put it together so you have a guide line uh, to have a, 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 an understanding of the overall process of course understand that it's not black and white some things are going to be different here and there but this is the overall process things take time uh, it's good to understand that when you're moving to Portugal houses are just going to look differently as a matter of fact Lisbon is the second oldest city in the world next to Rome so imagine buying a home in Lisbon the homes are going to be automatically different and no they were not built to have two bathrooms and I know myself I probably couldn't live in a home without having two bathrooms but the reality is in, I grew up in a household that didn't have that and I never thought anything of it uh, so it's just what are we looking for and Lucia your local expert is going to be able to navigate and, and explain how architecture also works and what kind of property you're going to get where not all homes are turnkey meaning they're not all ready to move in you may have the opportunity as i like to put it I'm, a, i'm an optimistic person okay folks so to me it's like an opportunity of you to put your own character in the home maybe you didn't like that countertop then you can you know switch it up uh, and, and and change the color of the walls and you know lucia is a local expert and she has a network she just doesn't know other realtors she knows contractors she can connect you with plumbers she will have some information for you to help you with some of those things um and you know homes are smaller it is europe europe is smaller i'm in the state of texas and texas alone is the size of europe so you can imagine how small sometimes the homes can be but they're not that little 
So homes have character. That's a word that Lucia uh, introduced to me. Uh, the homes in Portugal have character. I love that. So if you're looking for a home that speaks for itself, it's not a cookie cutter like you say in the US, not a new construction, clean lines, very modern. You want character that it speaks to you maybe uh, two centuries ago, Portugal is the place to go. Uh, now, we are doing a lot of things, and Lucy is going to start explaining that, uh, that facilitate a transaction with you being in the U.S. But not everything is electronic. A lot of the way of working in Portugal is in person and on paper, because it's part of our culture. That's how we build relationships. A lot of the times when we do business in Portugal, it's about you building a personal relationship with the other person. And that only happens if you meet in person and you write it on paper. So basically, it's a cultural thing. And that's just that. The world is different. Cultural, people have different cultures. And that's the beauty of the world. So uh, Lucia uh, referred us to a book uh, that she had a lot of clients recommend to her, actually. And it's a really good point of view uh, of Portugal uh, from an American. Right, Lucia? Yes, yes. And he, he covers a little bit of uh, everything in Portugal. His experience, he lived here. And uh, I find it very interesting because he's very, it has a lot of humor, but also a lot of tenderness, the way he describes the things that are not so positive from us or that he doesn't understand. So I find it's very interesting, his view about our country uh, and, uh, and our people. Absolutely. And you guys, it's uh, directly to be purchased on Amazon. And no, I am not affiliated with this writer. I'm not getting paid to say this and neither is Lucia. This is just, we thought it was funny and I saw it was 25 bucks for you to order it. Uh, I think it doesn't include shipping. So please just check it out and, and have fun reading it. But you know what? All of the things that we were saying that they are different are okay. That things are slower, the homes are older, they are not turnkey, because this is what you're getting. The reason why you are moving to Portugal, why you are here today, is because you want all of this. You want to be in a city that has access to these beautiful views, to be close to the beach, beautiful ocean. The architecture is quaint, small little streets, cobble streets, and, and that cities are a work of art as this picture here right uh with the fountain in the middle of lisbon uh, the, the streets themselves they are works of art you don't see uh streets that are so flourished in the way that they are put together like you see in porto and lisbon uh you have public transportation amazing food and of course uh, food and of course pastéis nata if you don't know custard pies by now i urge you to go try them last time i saw they sell them at trader joe's <laughs> All right, and we arrive to the most important part of this webinar. This is where I'm going to completely hand it over to Lucia. We're going to explain to you what the home buying process is in Portugal. Okay, <laughs> so here we are. We have we will we'll be talking about how we can buy a home in Portugal. We are focusing on these two methods, cash or loan. Um, here at Coldwell Banker City, not only we take care of all the paperwork, but we also uh, help you in this process. Uh, whether uh, you need a loan, we will talk about that uh, uh, later on. Uh, but we can you can buy cash loan and. And then you can also have access to Golden Visa. We'll explain also that. Um, so is there something else, Claudia? Not right now. <laughs> okay. So before you, you buy a home in Portugal, you need to do these two things first, which is you need to obtain this... Um, NIF, which is our fiscal number here for Portugal, and you need to open a, a bank account. Uh, for for the need you need to you can do it uh, in the, in the North America through a consulate or you can do it here in Portugal through a tax office uh, and you need these uh, documents that you need a proof of address you need the proof for, of your employment and a passport for your ID uh, the the need you can do it yourself or you can uh, delegate a representative who take care of this uh, 
for you. And for the bank, it's more or less, it's the same kind of documents, proof of address, proof of employment and passport. Um, for the bank, we, uh, you can open an account in US, for instance, or maybe in the Canada. There are some Millennium and Cash General Deposits. They have some branches over there and you can uh, start the process there to open an account or you can open over here in Portugal. And uh, whether you buy cash or loan, you can all you can those you can do that uh, by a legal representative. So you, if you are in your home country, U.S., Canada, you and you want to buy, you can do it without without traveling to Portugal. At the moment, I'm doing that with some clients, and it's a very um, simple um, process. Absolutely. So as um, uh, Lucy was saying, you can get your NIF for tax purposes. It's like it's not really a social security for the Portuguese, but it's what we would see here in North America. And you can have that done in a Portuguese consulate or even embassy, I believe. Uh, if you would like a list of where they are, reach out to me. But there is definitely one in uh, Washington, D.C. and one in L.A. Um, and you can appoint a representative. So I really have to commend uh, our colleagues in Portugal. We had a lot of buyers wanting to purchase in Portugal, but they couldn't travel. They were already starting the process, and now what? They couldn't get... So they come up with this idea of... And they have someone in their office. You could do your realtor. You could have the person in the office that is designated to handle finances and everything else, and you can give them a power of attorney. Of course, no one is signing any documents without you authorizing them. They will show you all the documentation explain the process but at least you have that uh you can also have just if you go with a spouse or if you're buying with a partner that one of you uh if they have portuguese nationality they can get in and out of portugal and so they can have the power of attorney and sign for you so that's really good for you to know and what the portuguese consider as legal ids the passport is very different here in the us we can use driver's license because it has our address it just seems logical to us but for the portuguese is passport so you need two different things to show address and then your id is the passport and we do have other banks that offer international services but right now the ones that we know that other clients have used is millennium and cash digital deposits that is a sort of credit union yes so we will start with the cash and uh, just to let you know that this, uh, all that we will present here is a, a standard process as an example. So it can be faster sometimes or can be slower sometimes, but we, this is an example how the normal process can work. Uh, okay, so this is a, a, when you buy cash, you can um, estimate the total time between 10 and 20 working days. Um, for instance, when the offer is accepted and the paperwork all is ready, everything is right, um, and the owner doesn't have a loan, you can schedule the deed contract within 10 days. And then you can uh, do that uh, directly to, to the deed contract. Uh, in the case that if the, the owner of the property has a loan, then you need to add 10 more days. And this is to give notice to the bank uh, that he will uh, finish his uh, loan and to issue the mortgage uh, cancellation. So that's why between 10 and 20 days uh, when you buy uh, cash. Uh, usually it's the buyer who sets the date for the deed contract. Um, and uh, here on the, on the left we have this, uh, the process outline for you as we referred before. It always starts with a meeting with a real estate agent. So here we uh, set up and understand what, what you're looking for, what you, where would you like to live, and also explain the process uh, as we referred before that I will do uh, as a next step the property search. But of course, if the client finds something that fits and that he likes, he can always and should always send to the consultant so that he can... Uh, check with the listing agent and uh, have all the information for you. And then when we find uh, have a, a selection of properties that he likes, we 
uh, I schedule showings and we can do this in person or virtually. As re I referred before, we are doing both. So for clients who are not here, we have been doing virtual visits, works well. Uh, clients are happy and I think they can have a feeling of the property. Um, and then if, if you then come here, we can always do in person and fill the, the area as well. Uh, we have this, uh, we refer here Sertidan de Tior. I think it's what's uh, mentioned to you, Lian's search, right? Where you, we can see the, what is the financial situation of the property, who, who is the owner and everything. We always check all the documentation. So this is just uh, uh, a note, but we all, all uh, check all the documentation, not only this one. Um, and then we can, uh, I work with you to prepare an offer for, for the property that you choose. Uh, and at this time, we can start uh, working on transferring the funds to your Portuguese account. So when you're paying cash, you then need to give some days to transferring the funds to a Portuguese account. Uh, while this, we are doing the negotiations, we are, you know, having a uh, different uh, options or, or different values being discussed uh, and we will eventually have an accepted offer. So when that happens, it's the, the case that I referred before, within maybe eight, ten days we can schedule the, the deed contract and we uh, one day before we can ask the bank to issue a cashier check uh, that will be um, written on the seller's name um, and on the day of the deed, we, everyone signs. Um, you give the, the, the buyer gives the cashier check to the seller. You receive the keys and the, 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 the buying is completed. And you just need then to set up the utilities and decide the moving day. And this is within 10, 20 days you have uh, after the accepted offer you have your new home in uh, in Portugal. I don't know if you, would you like to add something, Claudia? I just want to explain that um, in Portugal, we don't have a title company. So in the US, we do a lot of our transactions uh, either with a lawyer or with a title company. Uh, and uh, that's not really uh, what happens in, in, in Portugal. The agents uh, will have all the information about the property, all of the documentation, and uh, pretty much um, they will have the, the the legal paperwork and then it's a public notary that is going to issue the deed that's what you're signing pretty much the title of the home is free and clear to pass to you as the buyer so it's there's no title company there is no title insurance uh it's it's just done by a public notary uh, the cashier check as you all are aware is a safe check so we always recommend that you open an account when you start that initial consultation get all your nif number for tax purposes done prior you start actually looking and negotiating because if you find a property and you need to move fast and you you need to make sure you have all those things so that's something i wanted to share with you guys Okay, so you're moving to the loan option. You can also buy uh, through a loan from a Portuguese bank. And again, this is uh, what we are showing here is uh, an example of a normal process. So the costs are average and uh, in some cases it can be faster, slower, uh, more or less expensive than these examples. Just to you know, uh, have a reference here that we what, what we have here is a normal process that it can, in your real life, can also be a little different. Um, this is a guidance. And so when you apply for a loan, you need to give the, the bank uh, a set of documents to start this process, uh, which is you need to give them the, your passport as an ID uh, and then the information about your employment. And this is uh, the last uh, uh, more recent uh, salary slips and also the, your professional relationship. So what kind of contract do you have with the company? They need to understand that. Um, and also the bank statements for the, the three um, 
last month and your last tax return. So with this, they start to assess your situation and um, this is opening the, the process for the loan. Uh, you uh, here, it's also mandatory that you have uh, included in your in your loan um, life insurance, and this you have to do it through the bank that is doing giving you the loan. So if you have another life insurance in your country, it will not work for this. You will need to have this uh, life insurance included in your in your loan, and just for you to have that in mind, that is uh, a, a part from from the loan. And uh, it is also necessary to have a multi-risk insurance for the, for the property. Uh, this is also mandatory, but this one you can do it through this uh, the bank, uh, the insurance company of the bank, or you can uh, do it through a different uh, insurance company. Um, doesn't need to be the same. We found that, uh, for instance, the, the thing we were referring of the life insurance, there is one exception. Uh, there is in Novo Banco, they exempt uh, clients who are 65 years old or older. To, they don't need to have this life insurance. So it's not the standard, but uh, just to mention that is this possibility in this case with this bank. In terms of the process, the total cost we have here as an average is uh, 725. We will uh, at the end give you an idea of general costs of everything. Uh, and this will uh, include the, the whole process for the loan, which is opening the loan process, uh, you know, giving the documentation that you, that I referred before, and then uh, they will do the assessment, uh, they will assess your financial situation, doing the appraisal for the property that you choose, uh, doing the exact executed this uh, you don't need to do through the bank but, and then uh, having the appraisal um, issue presentation letter for the loan um, and this uh, after having this we need to give by law seven calendar days for clients uh, or customer reflection where they need to have this time period to think about if they want to move forward with the loan or not but in the, when you have this deadline, we can already start thinking of scheduling the deed contract and you can do it after eight days. So we need to give these seven days, but on the eighth day, you can, you can uh, already schedule the deed contract. Um, here also at Coldwell Banker City, we have this um, service that we provide to our clients which is helping to get the loan. And we can either, if you have already a Portuguese uh, bank account and you have an account manager that we, you work with with the Portuguese bank, we, can, uh, we have a process manager who, who deals with all the loans and you can uh, contact directly your account manager and work with him to find uh, the best uh, possibility for your loan or the best offer. Or if you don't have that yet, he can do a consultation on the market and, and see with your financial situation, can find what is the, the bank that offers you the best um, loan uh, option. And this is uh, uh, done uh, internally through our process manager and uh, at no additional costs to the buying clients. So uh, service, I think it's very interesting and helpful for a client who wants a loan to simplify also his um, his life and and I think okay. oh, highly yes. potential, right i mean oh, yes. whenever you have this person working with you although lucia is your agent this person has a, a, a non-disclosure confidentiality agreement with you that he cannot disclose any of your financial information to anyone unless if you yes. instruct them to. Yes, usually, the you, uh, as I mentioned, the, the documentation that you have to send to the bank, you will, you will send to this process manager directly. And I'm not, uh, I don't have that information. So that part, you, you work directly with each other and it's confidential. I don't have uh, information about that. Absolutely. So, so here we have uh, uh, the step-by-step -step process of uh, how it works doing a loan from a Portuguese client. 
uh, bank we we have already uh, done uh, said some of the, the steps before. So meeting with the real estate consultant is the first step. Uh, opening this loan process with the bank, so giving the documentation uh, and um, um, doing the property search, so finding options for you to visit. And when we have a selection, uh, scheduling the, the visits, uh, again, pers in person or virtually. Um, and then when you find uh, the, the property that you would like to buy, working with you for, uh, do, for establishing an offer, uh, also helping you with the negotiation and having uh, an accepted offer. Um, when that happens, uh, the bank usually do, does the visit for the appraisal. Um, and here you can um, wait for this result or not. But usually this is the standard process. You do the appraisal and then you do the sales contract. This sales contract is the contract that we call uh, the CPCV and is where the seller promises to sell and the buyer promises to buy. And usually uh, the buyer has to give them uh, a payment of 10%. In some cases, you, can, you, you may need to give more, but the standard will be the uh, 10%. Um, and then you um, will get the, from the, the bank the loan acceptance, so and the right to decision. Uh, you, you, we then have to wait those seven days for customer reflection, uh, but then we can already prepare and schedule the deed contracts and also um, ask for the cashier check uh, and, uh, and then have the, the contract signed and everything is done. Uh, also important here is when, when this is done through a loan, through a bank, the bank takes, uh, is in charge now for, uh, you know, following all the preparation for the deed and is also uh, another element, another entity checking, again, all the documentation, everything is in place. Uh, so you also have that uh, work from the bank because they will be in charge then for the preparation for the, the deed contract. Um, so it's something also that gives you even more uh, safety on the process. You have this uh, another entity working for you. Um, here again, also the buyer usually sets the date for the deed registration. And for this loan process, you should consider in terms of time that it will take between 30 to 45 working days. Again, just an average um, number of time, but it's the standard we should consider for, for the loan process. Yes. I don't know if you have something to, to add to. Well, I would like to just share with everybody, given that uh, I do sell a lot of homes here in the U.S. and I know what the North American uh, client is accustomed to. There is a few differences here. Uh, if you are based in the U.S. and you are wondering, uh, we have not addressed inspections in case you missed it. Uh, the reason being is that that's not usually done in Portugal, uh, but it is possible. It's not going to be uh, affecting the loan in any shape or form. Uh, and Lucia has a few comments companies that now, thanks to North American clients, exist in Portugal. They did not exist before. We had architects that could do a, a structural engineer report, but not really an inspection of the home. We also don't have seller's disclosure. If you have purchased homes in the U.S., you probably have gone through a seller's disclosure that tells you what the age of the roof is, the age of the AC, the age of the plumbing, everything else that doesn't exist really in Portugal, but there is a condition form uh, and there is also the certidão uh, tior that we explained in the beginning. I don't expect you to memorize that name. Basically, it's a lean search. Uh, and, and Lucia uh, and Colgo Banker in Portugal, there are one of the few companies I know that do it in the beginning of the transaction. One more reason to really partner up with a professional, a qualified professional, knowledgeable uh, and renowned uh, company uh, in Portugal. 
The other thing I wanted to talk about is setting up utilities. Let's just assume uh, that you are purchasing the property and you decided to do it uh, through assigning a power of attorney um, and, and you're dealing with that you know, uh, person in, in Portugal. Uh, that person will be able to do that for you as well. Of course, the power of attorney will also specify that they can go to the bank and you have author authorized the bank the amount uh, that needs to be on that cashier check or the secure check and then when it comes to uh the sales contract and earnest money is a little bit different so earnest money here you give that that earnest money means a promise that you want to you know you're moving forward you're doing everything you can to get the loan and, and get that home we can call it that as well but here it never comes back once you give it to the seller and you walk out of the deal you're not getting that money back am i correct lucia Yes, yes. So we just really need you to be sure that when you start the loan process, uh, be as forward as possible, uh, help the bank institution understand what your financial situation is. If you can have money in that bank account, it would be great. Uh, remember that the uh, buying a home in Portugal is a fairly easy process when you are working with a professional that knows what they're doing and also the bank institution lends money to anyone um, if they're not Portuguese uh, residents or nationals uh, up to 75% so you always have to have that remaining 25% in the bank uh, for you to to show that you have that money plus the income and everything else so we just want to we will do our part we will help you with everything but we also need you to help us uh, by being proactive active in doing all of those things and also being aware that there are some things that are really truly different uh, and you do need to give that sales contract that is where you sign uh, the promise of purchase with the seller and, and, and that 10% or more depending on, the, on the, the value of the property but you have that uh, option period to walk away if you want from the loan but you would be losing that money. So please be aware that you need to be very certain uh, that that's something you really want to do and, uh, and have that person in Colo Banker or with a financial part to, to really get you the best loan deal so there's no surprises later on. And the last thing I wanted to, to mention is that if you uh, need a management company, uh, either to set up utilities or manage the property, Lucy also has some good management companies now uh, available in Portugal that she can connect you with. Mm -hmm. Just one more thing, uh, as you refer that the uh, buyer can, can lose the, the money that they give. This contract serves to protect both sides, so the buyer and the seller. The buyer can lose that money if he, does, if he doesn't deliver his part, if he doesn't buy, but the seller can also lose uh, and he can uh, also has to uh, return the 10% maybe in double if he also uh, doesn't deliver his part. So if he doesn't fulfill the conditions, so this is also uh, you, the buyer is not only to have risks here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good points. Thank you for that, Lucia. So as we mentioned uh, before, uh, you can also apply for a golden visa. This, uh, uh, if you feel fulfill certain criteria, you can apply for the golden visa. Here we will just refer the standard values of investment. So if you invest uh, 350,000 or 550,000, you can open then a process, a separate process to uh, to get your golden visa. Here at Coldwell Banker City, we also work with lawyers, uh, team of lawyers who just do that uh, for you. Uh, because it's a separate uh, process and it starts with, in this case, uh, buying a, a property, uh, whether on the coast, uh, and then you have to apply the, the, the 500,000 um, investment or a, a lower investment. Uh, the lower investment, it's usually outside the big cities, not the coastline, uh, and it usually applies for properties aged 30 or, or more, and it also includes uh, the value of the renovations that you are going to invest uh, to update or remodel the, the property. Uh, through the 500,000, it can be both, old or new, and you can uh, even buy uh, not only one uh, property with this value, but maybe two, 
uh, and have one for you and one for investment or but at least it's something more flexible that you can have two properties uh, instead of just buying one for this value. Um, we, we are having some changes next year regarding this uh, 500,000 golden visa option uh, that will be at the moment, the, this is the, what we have uh, it will be cancelled that option so uh, in case you would like to do that kind of investment you need to make sure that this year you sign that contract that we for before the what we call the cpcv and uh, in english uh, you have a different name uh, so the sales contract <laughs> but with that you can already open the the process for the golden visa and then the deed you can do on the next year so it's not a problem that you only sign the final contract on the next year uh, if you have already the CPCV signed this year. That is mandatory. Fantastic. <laughs> really good information. Uh, you guys, if you want to, we, we did not want to spend a lot of time on Google Visa. A lot of you that are here today actually came from that webinar. So if you would, were not in that webinar, reach out. I can send you the replay. Um, and uh, I have a, a, another specialist in, in Portugal, but as well a lawyer that talks through the whole process. Okay, so costs to consider, we have here two columns, like we talked before, the cash buyer and the loan. I'll go through the cash buyer. So the first cost you should consider is the notary fees, the one where you will do the deed contract. So around 500 US dollars in this case. And then the taxes. We have one taxes, which is the proper transfer tax that co can go from 2% to 8%. This is depending on the cost of the property. I can uh, tell you just as a reference that if you buy between two, uh, 287 until 574,000, it's 8%. But then above that amount till 1 million, it's 6%. So just to give you an idea, as we've referred around these amounts before, this is the tax you should consider. Then there is the stamp duty, which is from the sale price. You should consider also 0.8%. And then when you have the property on your name yearly, you have to pay the municipal tax on real estate that goes uh, between 0.3% to 0.5%. Uh, there is one option that you can be exempted to pay this for three years. And we have the information there what, uh, what is the criteria, but it's also only three years. And then when you consider loan, you should add to these costs, you know, the opening the, the loan process, as we referred before, which is around the 725 US dollars. For the notary fees, we have a higher amount, so between 900 and 1,000 something, a little bit more. And as we mentioned before as well, the life insurance, which is mandatory, unless you consider that only you are in that age group and you consider that only bank that exempts you for that. And also the, the building insurance. Here I have an example. So 170 US dollars per year for uh, around 1,000 square feet condominium, just to have an idea of how much it would cost. Um, of course, then we can uh, go through this in detail with you. Uh, for your specific case, but this, this gives you already a uh, first approach of costs when buying a property here in Portugal. Yeah, I think it's... It's, it's very helpful. I, I think it's uh, very helpful for everyone to have a little bit of understanding. Uh, everyone, this is it. So <laughs> if you are buying a home in Portugal, request a complimentary consultation i will be sending you a follow-up email that will have a link for that consultation schedule and it will have this presentation slides as well for your reference if you have any questions that we would like that you would like us to answer right now uh the q a is open and we can definitely answer any questions you may have uh if not feel free to always send us any questions later on uh again uh, Lucia, thank you so much for, for all of this information today. Thank you as well. I'll be ha happy to help uh, clients from North America.